All right, the Big 12 pod. We are in the pod that includes, we'll start with Iowa State, K-State, KU, and West Virginia. All right, so Iowa State, we mentioned. Big 12 North. Big 12 North, there you go. Craig's got specific names of them, and that's one of them. Iowa State, uh, been kind of under the radar a little bit. They have Arkansas State in a game that you think they should continue to run what they're doing. And what Iowa State's done, that win against Iowa, of course, was huge for them. Quality win, Craig. Yeah, you hadn't heard about them lately because they had the open week. So we heard about them with that win over Iowa, and then we didn't hear about them because they went and uh, celebrated for an extra few days and uh, got back to working on what they need to work on for this uh, second uh, leg of the schedule because, of course, remember, everybody's got two bye weeks. They just had the super early one, but coming right after that Iowa win, I think, was – uh, was great timing for them, but I think they're a team that's right there just outside the door entry to the club of contenders, and and I think even the door might be a little bit cracked for them. Uh, it remains to be seen because we do have such a long way to go, but I do like them as a team in that top handful besides K-State and besides Utah and whoever else you would like to throw in that mix, but I think they're above Arizona now. I think they're above like quite a few teams that maybe they were all kind of positioned with in that middle of uncertainty i think they're at the top of that pile now so uh, i like what ace uh, what iowa state's got going on arkansas state i'm not sure we're going to learn a whole lot this week uh because i just that's not an opponent that i feel like is gonna uh test them the way that we're gonna see um you know them get tested moving forward but it's a solid two and one team that just went and lost by 10 to michigan which you take that how you want to given where michigan is but um yeah this is a game they should win they should be three and oh and they should be marching into big 12 play feeling really great about where they are especially coming off of a, a week where hopefully you got healthy uh, i think it's 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 a, a bit of fortunate scheduling for them that you have the Cyhawk game and then you get that bye week uh, in that you had this emotional game and and a lot of injuries uh, and too. a lot of injuries that you get to heal up. You had this like very physical slobber knocker of a game that you came back in, but then you also have a week to maybe avoid that the immediate letdown game. So you heal up and you kind of move past the Cyhawk game, the rivalry game, and then you move on. You get Arkansas State, who's who's who can do some things, uh, but. This should be a win. They're 22-point favorites in this game. Um, the real test starts coming when they get into Big 12 play, but they've got a nice little runway in that too. So if this is a team that can build some momentum and some confidence, I, I wouldn't want to play against them. That's for sure. I, don't want to, I wouldn't really want to play against them now because of their style, but if they get confident, they're very, very dangerous. All right, Kansas State playing in Provo after the win when they drilled Arizona at home. Seem to do everything. They had a special teams touchdown. They do that like four to five times a year. Obviously, uh, uh, the quarterback, uh, Avery Anderson, was a- Avery Johnson. I, I stopped saying Who is that. Avery Anderson? Uh, he's a player that plays for Oklahoma State in basketball, but I don't know why. That <laughs> I don't was, I don't, I it, no but you're a Spurs fan, it's so Avery a, Johnson, yeah. I feel like, should be the one that no, stands I out. Know, but I'm just wondering who that was you keep mentioning. I've done that seven or eight times, and it's unfortunate. Uh, and, and so – they're now on the road against BYU up in Provo. It's a night game after the emotional and very impressive win against Arizona. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how emotional it was outside of just, like, excitement and happiness and all of the really good emotions because um, they were able to pull away in that second half and, and really leave no doubts about who the better team was. I thought K-State going in was a better team but just didn't know really where on the measuring stick Arizona would find itself because we've just seen a little bit of this, a little bit of that from them. And then we saw a whole lot of K-State being better than Arizona in this game. Avery Johnson able to use his legs. Uh, They had some stuff for him this week that I know a lot of people have been clamoring for for more run game from Avery Johnson. So we got to see a good bit of that. I think the passing game is just always going to be a bit of a, just a progression thing, but he looked good there he's just he's obviously not an elite thrower right now and and I don't know when he will be but he's good enough to get the job done and especially when you have the dual threat element to him so that was really encouraging to see um but yeah that that game was pretty one-sided um 
in, in favor of K-State ultimately. So I think you feel really great about that. You separated yourself. You're in that top contender list now as well. Some may argue you're the best team in the league, depending on Cam Rising's health or even regardless of Cam Rising's health. And that's kind of where we positioned K-State before the season started. So I think they're right where you expected. Uh, they maybe have had like a blip or two just in terms of play that has been a product of replacing your O-line, replacing your OC, having a young quarterback, but they've navigated that well. They took care of the Wildcats, which was a game that you looked at. You're just like, oh, it's a week night. Is it home? But, you, you know, you just never know. You didn't know how good Arizona was, but now you've passed that. BYU, though, is really interesting because it is uh, at, a night, uh, at night in Provo, and so that does add an extra element of danger I do think they are the better team and they should go win this game but the elements involved uh could could make this more interesting than let's say if it was played at a neutral site or played in you know in Manhattan on a on a Saturday afternoon so that that part of it makes it more intriguing but I still feel like they should be 4-0 after this game yeah I think they'll be 4-0 uh Avery Johnson fan club member here as you guys know <laughs> uh so it, it, and I might be the 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 treasurer or something like that I mean I, I really do like him I, I can't wait to see as he gets better and better as he gets better as a passer as he as he adds elements to his game I love both their running backs Dylan Edwards had the punt return mm -hmm. uh, as well last week they've got a lot of different ways that they can that they can uh, score on you and Chris Kleiman's always going to be kind of turning the screws on that defense and the the way that that things go I I I I like them at the top of the conference still I, not, my opinion hasn't changed that much maybe they're a little you know less experienced than they need to be to to really make a deep run if if they got to the playoff but we're not even to that point yet uh, I think this is a team that can get on a get on a real roll all right so there you go with that K State. Uh, and BYU now Kansas, mm. Woo. lost twice now UNLV. They lost as well to Illinois, who you heard Phil Snow talk about how good Brett Bielema and his defense. They've got big physical receivers, but KU and West Virginia. You have these games where both teams need to win. Something has to give here. Yeah, I mean this is a, a must win for both sides. Not in terms of anything big picture changing really uh, like I don't think you know Neil Brown's getting fired if he doesn't win this game or that K-State's not going to still win the big tw uh, that Kansas can't you know still uh, win the big 12 or something if they were to lose this game but it's going to put whoever is that team on the losing side it's going to put them in a real pickle at one and three like a real deal pickle you still got the remaining conference schedule left but given the expectations for both where each one was Kansas certainly was in most people, if not everyone's top five in the Big 12. And West Virginia was in a lot, if not like number six on those lists. So um, this is not an ideal start for either side and has made this game a much bigger deal than I think it ever was going to be otherwise. So that part of it is exciting. The other part of it is exciting is this is like a dead heat no matter what projections you look at. Uh, I think last I looked, West Virginia was like a – two and a half point favorite if you look at like the ESPN matchup predictor it's like 50 point something to 49 point like this is about as even as you can get on paper does being in Morgantown matter yeah that, um, that's the two and a half I yeah, guess. yeah yeah I think that that's that's what separates it in favor of of West Virginia but beyond that these are two really equal teams Kansas uh, obviously, the story is, is surrounding Jeff Grimes and, and the offense and Jalen Daniels and just the fact that he's not quite what you hoped he would be coming back and, and hoping that he would be full-strength Jalen Daniels we saw two years ago. He's not that guy right now, and I don't know if he, he will be again, but they've got a great run game to lean on. Um, but, yeah, it's much more problem, problematic on offense than I think most people anticipated. Um, but you kind of... Like we, I dropped it a few times. Like Andy Cotto, Nikki leaving was was a bigger deal than than fans are going to want it to be. Oh no, Jeff Grimes will come in; it'll be fine. It's like no, we're clearly seeing like a month in that it's not the same thing. So that's playing into this, and and I'm really interested to see what that looks like on the other side of this game. Is that same conversation because it's sizzling right now for KU? Yeah, uh, when I think about um, KU West Virginia in this game. The song that keeps popping up to me in my head is "Who Are You?" Yeah, yeah I really want to yeah. know. Like, I really want to know who who are you? This is a who are you game. We saw one last week with UCF and TCU that I think kind of confirmed to both sides. We knew who those teams are. Uh, this could maybe be the same kind of game. Hopefully, not in a negative way for one for both these teams. But who is going to get out of their funk and get in this thing? Uh, Kansas, I think 
is a little better suited to that, but it doesn't mean that that's the case because if they don't get out of their own way pretty soon, then it's not going to matter if they're better suited to anything. West Virginia, same thing. Like, find some identity. Uh, Garrett Green's got to get better. I mean, he can be very exciting, but it appears to the early part of the season that opposing defensive coordinators have kind of figured him out a little bit, and that's not a good thing for the Mountaineers. And I'll say this about both is, you know, besides the Penn State game, their losses are all like close. fine. Yeah, yeah, they're close games. Like KU's two losses are close losses in tight games that they could have won if a player two goes differently or if Daniels throws one less interception or whatever. So if mm-hmm. there is something to hold on to, there is that. And then for West Virginia, I mean, obviously you should have won that pit game. Like you obviously should have won that. Penn State, no. Like that that game was was one sided, but that's what you can cling on to for at least another week or two if you're these two teams. But it's going to be awfully hard no matter what the outcome is if you're on the losing side, even if it's a last-second field goal or whatever, because you're going to be 1-3 and three and, and starting off 0-1 and in the Big 12. Not insurmountable, but it certainly crushes some other goals, grander picture goals you might have had and, and puts you in a, in a bit of a hole. Yeah, it's, it's man, it's intriguing. You have the, the collisions, like you have Utah, Oklahoma State, and then you have this collision where somebody – desperately needs a win the loser my goodness KU with three losses and you wonder how the rest of their season might go yeah I think Lance Leipold would have to like make a statement of some sort somehow Mm -hmm. um and I don't say like you fire Jeff Grimes or anything but I I feel like people are going to start calling for something if you're one and three to start the season given the expectations rolling in all right so we hit KU we hit uh West Virginia that's part of uh no Iowa State excuse me we also hit Kansas State who am I missing no, we, West Virginia, we were just talking no, about yeah, both. No, yeah, that's a part of the same pot, West yeah, Virginia. Yeah, they're together. Right? Yeah, so, so yeah, we, we already did, together. we did all four of them. Now, that's, two, that's what you call a twofer in the that, biz. That's a 